Hi, I'm Nathaniel Whiston, and today I'm going to be exploring the legend of Jacko Legs. So I'm traveling to the village of Weston. It's to the southeast of Bulldog, to the southeast of Letchworth Garden City, to the northeast of Hitchin, and it's in North Hertfordshire, in West Anglia. Now the story of Jacko Legs is a relatively simple one. Jack was a giant, possibly between 8 to 14 feet tall. Quite the uh, man about town in those days, I assume. It's hard to not be a man about town when you're a giant. It's said that Jack could hold conversations with friends who lived on the first floor of buildings. I'm sure there were other uses for his height as well, but it's a pretty good one to have. Weston had gone through a very poor harvest. There was little food. They called on Jack. They said to him, Jack, we're starving. We have no food. What can you do for us? He knew of uh, a miller who kept a lot of grain. So he, he went to that mill. He stole the grain and he returned to the townsfolk to hand it out to them. Now I know he did thieve, yes, but it was a noble theft, like Robin Hood stealing from the rich to give to the poor, the miller was hoarding the grain and forcing the townspeople to pay over the odds for it. So what Jack was essentially doing was, was charity, a kind of Bob Geldof of his day in West Anglia. Because and the millers and the people who were getting rich off hoarding the grain and bleeding the townsfolk dry were unhappy. They were unhappy with Jack. So they decided to put a stop to him. One day they hid in the churchyard somewhere in Bulldog, hiding behind gravestones like cowards, and they clubbed Jack. They beat him. And they had to batter him with clubs. That was the only way to beat him. And they tied him up, not before sticking red hot pokers into his eyes. Gotta go slow here. They gave him one last request and Jack said fetch me my bow and arrow, you know, pretty big bow and arrow, no one else could pull it. He said bring me my bow and arrow, so they gave it to him. Brit lands, I want you to bury me there. So, you know, fair enough, they said. Blind, remember? And he fired it in the direction of Weston. And the legend states that it flew for over three miles and landed in the churchyard of Holy Trinity Church in Weston, which is where I'm going today. His name was Jack O'Legs, like Des O'Connor or Sinead O'Connor. I don't know whether he was Irish or not. I suspect not, but I also am in no position to confirm that today. What if there was somebody in the village who just had a big head? Was he called Dave O'Head? Or, you know, somebody with a, with a big nose? Were, were they called Bill O'Nose? Have I taken a wrong turning? I see no signs, is this it? I'm gonna go up here, yeah. I think this is the right way. You know, there's no big signs, you know. Go visit the grave of Jacko Legs. Why don't we do that, you know? This is why West Anglia isn't on the map. We're too modest. We hide these things, you know. It's like we're, we don't want to bring attention to them. Oh yeah, um, there isn't much to see here. Only the, the grave of a, of a 14th century giant. What? Who, who wouldn't want to go see the grave of a 14th century giant, you know? really doing ourselves down. I've gone the wrong way. Alright, turn around. Nice. 
Jones. See, this is why we need signs. You know, legend of Jacko Lakes. Let's get people coming to West Anglia. And here we are. We're in Weston. There's so little detail about Jack's life that we need to fill in the rest of the gaps with predictions, guesses, assumptions. It's an unreliable story, however, we do have some evidence, as in the graveyard, and a few stories here and there. But it's an unreliable story. There's a lot of things that are unreliable in life. Take your friends. Take my friend Jeremy, who should be here today filming this, but he's decided to go shopping in Cambridge with his girlfriend. Something he could have done at the weekend, something he could have done another day, but uh, no, he, he chose to do it today. Jack's story is a lot like my friend Jeremy. Unreliable. I'm now standing in a field about 300, uh, 400, it's, it's about a three minute walk to where Jack is buried over there. But when we know the legend of his bow and arrow being fired from Bulldog, it's very possible that if a wind had picked up that day, the arrow could have landed right here and Jack would have a very ignoble end, his final resting place being beside a cow pat. What would have happened if the arrow had landed here? Would we really have buried Jack on the cow field? Would we have moved the cows somewhere else, perhaps to this part of the field where there are no cows? It's hard to say. Sitting. Not even watching, just sitting. It must have been a very uncertain time for everyone in there. This just looks terrible. This looks absolutely terrible. This is your fault, Jeremy. If you were here today, you could be standing in front of me, you could be telling me I'm doing it wrong, you could be telling me the lighting's off, the sound's off. Now you're the one with all the know-how. Where are you? Over there, shopping in Cambridge, being dragged around Debenhams. Something you can do any day of the week. But no, you have to pick this day, don't you? You have to pick this day. So here I am, camera at arm's length, shaking around all over the place. I mean, who's gonna watch this? God. It's in a forest like this, where the townspeople, having turned to starvation after the greed and avarice of the bakers and millers of Bulldog, they would come here foraging for food, perhaps berries, perhaps any kind of edible plant or mushroom. But as you can see, it's pretty slim pickings. It was by this lake where the villagers would come and fish for food. They had scoured the forest with no luck, so they would come here hoping that the dark waters would bring forth cod, trout, or another medium-sized fish with enough meat on it to feed the family for a day or two. Unfortunately, there were no fish in here. We can only guess as to why not, but if I was to put money on it, I would guess it was something to do with the millers and bakers of Bulldog. 
In many ways, Jack is a superhero, just as Batman and Superman would hear the call and save the city, as would Jack with Reston. But unlike Batman and Superman, you have multi-million dollar industries around them, churning out films, TV series, t-shirts, books, posters, toys, apps, and anything else you'd like to think of. We have none of that for Jack. Jack has a modest, simple grave here in Western, in West Anglia, but there's no film, there's no TV, there's no t-shirts. He just died and they gave him a grave. A couple of people may have heard of him and that's it. Jeremy, I hope when you're editing all this you can figure out how it goes because I don't think you're going to have a bloody clue, honestly. Driving to Western, parking, talking for a bit about Jack, go walking around, you know, end on the grave, that's kind of the whole big finish. I don't mean to be patronising but I am slightly worried about your ability to do that. I just don't want it to look unprofessional. It needs to look good quality. And I know that's going to be difficult because half the bloody time I'm walking around with uh, holding the camera at arm's length. So it does look pretty awful. But telling me about how good you are at editing, how fancy your computer is. So you can pull this out of the bag, Jeremy. All will be forgiven. How about that? We've heard the fantastic story of Jacko Legs today, a local legend and hero in the village of Weston. So I hope you'll join me, Nathaniel Weston, next time for another legend of West Anglia. Goodbye. <laughs>